Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. Over the last couple of months, I've been doing a bunch of Synology videos, primarily because I've been doing a lot of self-hosted projects here around the house. And you can take a look at the playlist in the video description to see everything we've done so far. And what I wanted to do today is set up a remote cloud backup, but the cloud in this case is going to be something that I own and control, basically taking a second Synology NAS and moving it off site and having that be the destination for the backups originating here at the house. And in this case, we're gonna move that off site backup over to my mother's house where she has one of those symmetrical fiber optic connections now. But my mother's only got 500 megabits of symmetrical service, which will take a really long time to transfer over a large volume of data. So what we're gonna do is run the initial backup here on the local network with both NASAs physically here together, and that'll get that data transferred over really quickly. And then when we're done, we're gonna move it offsite to my mother's house for the incremental backups that will follow. Now we're gonna to get to this project in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Synology is a sponsor here on the channel from time to time, but they are not sponsoring this video. They are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. The Synology devices that I'll be using today were provided to the channel free of charge by Synology for some reviews we did a little while back. So let's get into it now and see how we can get this remote backup set up here at the house. Now before we begin, there are a couple of prerequisites that we have to get installed on both ends of the transaction here. On the remote system, the one that will be receiving the backups, what we need to do is make sure that Hyper Backup Vault is installed on that device. You'll find that in the Synology Package Center. Hyper Backup Vault is basically the server application for the Hyper Backups that we'll be sending from the source machine. So make sure that is running on the destination. And one of the things that I've been having a lot of fun with lately is Tailscale, and that's the other app that I'm going to recommend you install. This is a VPN application that works exceptionally well because you don't have to open up any ports on your router and it allows us to very easily make the transition from local to remote when we're ready to move this device off site. And what's nice about Tailscale, and I did a whole video on it, so definitely check it out to learn more, is that Tailscale is available in the package center now. So it's just a regular Synology app that you can install. And once you set up your little Tailscale network, You'll have all of the devices that you want to connect to each other accessible like they're locally attached to one another, but it's over the internet and it is very, very secure. And I found it to be uh, really a game-changing utility for me. And the best part is it's free for most use cases here, including the one that we're going to do right now. Now, if you do intend to use Tailscale as your VPN solution, there is one more step that you have to go through. And this involves enabling outbound connections for the Tailscale application. This is due to some security features in the new DSM-7 operating system. So if you're running DSM-7 or above, you're gonna to need to do this at the minimum on the source machine for your backup. But I would suggest doing it on both so that you have some flexibility for doing two-way communications. And when you enable this, you'll be able to connect up to your remote machine without issue. Now, if you go down to item six here on the list and just copy this into your clipboard and then go over to your Synology NAS device, and again, I would suggest doing this on both, go to the control panel, go to task scheduler, go to create and select triggered task user defined script and give it a name. We'll just call this tail scale and we'll give it a user of root. This is required. It has to be root. The event is going to be boot up. And what we're gonna do here is just paste in the text that I copied from the tail scale support page we were just looking at. And then I'm going to click on okay. And there is a warning that'll come up here about what you're about to do. It's okay, this is uh, vetted. And we're gonna click on okay here. And then we're going to need to type in our password to lock it in. So let me do that real quick. All right, so password is in. I'm going to click on the button here and now it is on our list of scheduled tasks. What you probably should do at this point is reboot the NAS devices so that this script can enable itself. And then after that, you can pick it up from where we left off here. 
All right, the next thing I want to do on the destination system is create a folder for these backups to live in. So on the destination system, we're going to go over to shared folder. I'm going to create a new shared folder. We're going to call this one backups, and we'll go through just the defaults on everything for now. And then we will apply this, and there we go. We've got our folder. Now, another thing I'm going to do here just for good practice is set up a separate user for this backup function on the remote NAS. This is not necessary per se, but I think it's good practice not to have a regular user also be the user for the backup function. So we're going to go over to our control panel, click on user and group, and we're going to click on create here. I'm just gonna call this backups, but of course you can call it whatever you want. And my password is not so strong here, but this is just a demonstration. So we're gonna click on next here. We're gonna click on next again. And what I'm gonna do is give this user read write access to only the backups folder. So they're not gonna have access to any of the other files here on the remote NAS, just the folder that we've designated for bringing the backups into from the other machine. I'm not gonna set any limits here. Now for permissions, we're going to deny all of the applications here with the exception of the hyper backup vault which is what we're going to be using to connect to this NAS. So we're going to enable that, but disable everything else. And we're going to click on next tier. I'm going to leave this as is and then click done. And now we have a user ready. And the best part is now we're ready to set up the backup on the source machine because we are all configured now on the remote NAS. So let's get to that. So now on the source NAS, we're going to make sure that Hyper Backup is installed, and it is. And if you wanted to use the Tailscale VPN, you'll want to install that from the package center, and then of course go through the process I described earlier for fixing the outbound connection issue. And once you have all that installed, the next step here is to set up the backup. So what we're gonna do here is load up Hyper Backup on the source NAS and it'll bring you up to what might be a blank screen if you've never had a backup set up before. I have a bunch of backups set up and I'm just going to add another one. In either case, the process here will be the same. I'm going to click the plus icon here. I'm going to click folders and packages and I'm going to select remote NAS device and click on next. And what I'm gonna do here is type in the local IP of the NAS that I'm going to soon make my remote NAS. Now at this step, you're going to need the IP address on your local network for the destination NAS. You could also type in the tail scale address. And the cool thing about using the tail scale address is that once you get everything backed up locally, you just have to bring it to the new location and connect it to the internet and it will automatically reconnect your backup. But what we're gonna do in this example is show the transition from a local IP to a remote one so that you can see how this might work under any circumstances, but the tail scale uh, approach might be the fastest and least complicated. Now, I don't have a certificate on this particular uh, NAS or the one I'm sending it to for security, so I'm going to turn this feature off. If you do have a certificate, you can turn it on. When you're using a VPN technology like tail scale or some of the other ones that Synology supports, there will be transfer encryption already but of course having the certificate would give you an added layer there. But we're gonna leave it off for now just so we don't get errors thrown at us here. And I've got the local IP address typed in here. The next thing I need to do is log in to the remote NAS for backup purposes. So I'm going to click on login. We're gonna get an error about the self-signed certificate, that's okay. And what I'm going to do now is type in the username of that backup user we created on the destination NAS a minute ago. We called that backups. I'm going to type in the password here and it'll immediately, if it authenticates properly, close the tab and bring you right back here. And you can see now that we are authenticated, so we're good to go. The next step is to select the shared folder and that user only has access to the backups folder, which is fine. And as you can see here, it named the directory for us that this backup will go into. And it's called iosafe1, but of course you could change this to whatever you want. So we're going to leave that as the default, just so I know what it is. And then I'm going to click on next. And then the next thing we'll have here are what folders we want to back up. And in this example, we're just gonna do a quick one here. So I'm gonna select the folder that I've got 
here for demo purposes called Back Me Up, and we'll click on Next. I can also decide to back up some of my applications if I wanted to. I'm going to skip that here, but that's something that you should do if you want to have a nice complete uh, backup of not only your data, but the settings for your different applications. And then we have the option to set this up. And I'm going to rename this task to something I can remember. I'm just going to call it Backup Demo. And we're going to enable the task notification. So every time this fires off, we'll get a notification on our Synology interface. I'm going to leave the log off, but you can turn it on if you want. You have the decision as to whether or not you compress the backup data. If you've got a lot to back up, this might save you some space, so that might be something to do. Uh, you can also schedule it. So this right now is scheduled to run every day at 3 a.m., but I have the option to change these around if I want. There's also a task that they suggest you run weekly that will just check the integrity of the backup over time. It's probably something you should do. And then you can also enable client-side encryption. And this is different than the certificate thing we talked about a minute ago. So what you can do here is encrypt the data before it leaves your NAS so that if somebody were to get a hold of the other NAS and start looking at it, they won't be able to access the data without the password that you specify here. So that's a good security measure that you might want to enable. I'm going to leave it off for this demo, but this is something that I do on a regular basis for my regular backups. So we're going to uh, click on Next now that we've made those decisions. This is something called Backup Rotation. I've covered this in some of my other Hyper Backup videos. And what this will do is keep revisions of files based on a number of parameters that you can specify on this screen here. I'm just going to set mine to Smart Recycle but you might want to go through some of these retention settings to determine how many different versions of the files you want to keep. Because every time you change the file, it'll keep a record of each of those changes up to a certain point. Right now, by default, it is set to keep 256 versions of each file. And the cool thing is you can roll back uh, snapshots here, in this case, about four years rolling forward. So it's a great way to get at some old data if you messed it up at some point in the future. And now we're going to click on Done. And this will add this to our Synology Hyper Backup schedule here. And this will just take a second to get set up. And then the backup will start running. And what's great about this, again, is that we're going to run this on the local network so that we'll get the fastest data transfer for the biggest load of data that we'll have going through this process here when I click on Yes. And so this will get done so much faster than having to send it over the internet first. So I'm going to let this run out and complete. And what I'm going to do after this is done is show you how we're going to connect a real backup to a remote server that I've got about 10 miles away from here. All right, so now we're going to take a look at a huge backup that I did the other day of about two and a half terabytes of data. I did the transfer from the source NAS to the destination NAS on my local network. And that is why we've got this now reading offline. And up here, we've got the local IP address that we were initially connecting to. Now, what I'm going to do here is click on this little down arrow key and click on Edit. And you could actually go back into the backup task and add folders and remove them from the backup here. But what we're going to do instead is just go over to Target. And I'm going to take out the local IP that was in there. And I'm going to replace it with the tail scale IP. But you could put any domain name in here, or uh, maybe your Synology quick uh, connection address can go in here. Basically, anything that can be publicly reached over the internet or reached over your VPN connection will work here. And I'm going to click on OK. And what will happen here after we do that OK is that Hyper Backup will try to connect to the Hyper Backup Vault on the destination server across the internet here. And this will take a second for all that reconnection to occur. But once it does, you will go hopefully from offline to online and you can pick up your backups right where they left off. And here you go. Uh, we are now online and I could do a backup right now and catch up on whatever was added to my backup or changed since the last time these two servers communicated with each other. But it's not going to take any, anywhere nearly as long as it did initially, because now instead of backing up two and a half terabytes of data, we're just backing up whatever happened since the last time 
uh, we did run this backup task. And I think the only thing it's going to do is transfer over a text file that I added a few minutes ago. So let's let this thing run out real quick and then we'll check the vault and see if our new file is in there. All right, there we go. We've had a successful backup. And if I jump into my Explorer here, I can check and see if a file that I just created made its way over to the remote system over at my mom's place. And sure enough, the test file that I just did is now safely backed up on the other end of town. And this backup took a lot less time because the only thing it was backing up was that little file and a couple of other things that changed since the last time these two devices talked to each other this morning. So very quick and easy here to get yourself a remote cloud backup without any monthly fee. The only thing you gotta pay for is the hardware. And once you've got that installed, it will just work forever like this. So really cool stuff. This works very similar with the snapshot replication feature that Synology also has. I've done videos about that too. So it's a great solution, I think, to getting that initial data load done locally and then relocate the servers and you can continue uh, with a much shorter backup time and much less bandwidth consumed for the subsequent incremental backups that happen after that. And your data is safe on the other end of town. If we ever had an issue and we needed to do a restoration of everything, I could just drive over and grab the NAS and do the restore here. So you've got a lot of flexibility with this. And again, it's a great way to keep your data off of publicly accessible clouds, yet still getting the benefit of a lot of these subscription backup solutions. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Om De Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.